How much do you know about Southeast Asia? If you don't live there or have never been there, the answer is probably closer to the not much end of the spectrum. And I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense, because here in America we're only really exposed to a few things from Thailand, a couple things from Vietnam, and an actually really good Disney movie that no one is really talking about. But that doesn't stop people from having a lot of interesting questions about the region's countries. So I popped to Google and searched, why does, for each of the countries of Southeast Asia. I don't normally like making these list style videos to be clear, but at least with Southeast Asia I only have to answer 11 questions instead of 45 like in Europe. So hopefully I can answer these questions much more thoughtfully. Anyway, let's dive straight into Myanmar. Why does Myanmar use Imperial? They don't actually, or well, kind of. Historically, they haven't had any official measurement system. It is true that Myanmar has for some time been one of the three countries that don't officially use the metric system, but Myanmar has traditionally used their own measurement system, in combination with the British imperial system, being a former British colony and all that. Anyway, Myanmar spent much of its post-colonial years in relative isolationism from the rest of the world. This, however, has somewhat begun to change in recent years, as the country has opened up and gradually begun the process of metrification. By the way, let me know in the comments if I should consider making a video on the history of the metric system or something like that. Why does Thailand drive on the left? Normally the answer of course is either British colonialism or aligning with their neighbors. But Thailand only has one left side driving neighbor, Malaysia. And of course they were never colonized by any European country. With Thailand, the traditional story goes that the first ever car in the country was sent to the king in the 1900s as a gift from, you guessed it, Great Britain although there aren't many easily findable sources to verify this story. A possibly more likely explanation, though, revolves around Japan's influence in the Thai automotive industry. Why does Cambodia have landmines? From 1967 to 1975, Cambodia suffered a devastating civil war, a Cold War proxy war which is often lumped in as part of the Greater Vietnam War. Throughout the war, the different sides set up a whole host of landmines throughout the country, with some estimating there to be 4 to 6 million in total, and some going as high as 10 million throughout the country. This is still particularly the case in rural areas, where they quite infamously still have a drastic effect on the nation's tourism and agricultural sectors, as well as thousands of Cambodian citizens. Why does Lao speak French? Actually, Lao's only official language is, well, Lao. Though languages like Hmong and Khmu are also spoken by minority groups, and French is often used as a language in commerce and government because... French colonialism. Honestly, I could have made the whole answer just those last two words, but just want to provide a little bit more context, you know? Why does Vietnam like the US? Ah yes, something I can easily answer without any sort of controversy. This is quite a complicated question, and do remember the US and Vietnam aren't exactly the best of friends. The Pew Research Center did find Vietnamese people of all generations to have a more favorable view of the US, though do keep in mind that this was of a sample size of 1,000. To way oversimplify everything, after the Vietnam War, the US led a trade embargo against Vietnam, which was lifted in the 1990s. The US is now Vietnam's largest trading partner, and US policymakers often look to Vietnam as a potential ally against China, a country which has repeatedly conquered Vietnam numerous times throughout its history. I'm told that leaves a bit of a sour taste in one's mouth. In fact, Vietnam largely sided with the Soviet sphere after the war, as this was after the Sino-Soviet split, when all the other communist countries of the world had to effectively pick between China and the USSR. The US's large navy could also potentially serve as leverage against China in the South China Sea disputes as well, though this is a topic that really should not be condensed into a 30 to 60 second clip. Speaking of which, let's proceed with something completely different. Why does Malaysia have an American flag? Convergent flag evolution. The Malaysian flag, or the stripes of glory, has nothing to do with the American flag, as you can see by how there are 14 stripes instead of 13. See? Totally different. Malaysia's flag was based somewhat off the old British East India Company flag, with 14 red and white stripes and a blue canton with a gold crescent and 14 pointed star. The 14 stars and points, of course, representing the 14 states 13 states of Malaysia. Why does Singapore speak English? Singapore actually has four official languages. English, Mandarin Chinese, Malay, and Tamil. Malay because Malaysia's, like, right there, and also they were briefly part of Malaysia in the 60s, until being kicked out. Mandarin because of the large Chinese community, Tamil from the large Indian, and particularly South Indian community, and English because it was a British colony. Honestly, why else? 
If you're going to Singapore, by the way, and don't know which language to learn beforehand, my advice would be, when in doubt, just use English. It's sort of a lingua franca between groups. As I've mentioned in my Everything You Need to Know About Singapore video, in fact, English in Singapore has given rise to a local dialect called Singlish, which incorporates aspects from English slang as well as the other languages spoken in the diverse city-state. Why does Indonesia have so many volcanoes? Alright, here's Indonesia. This is the Eurasian Plate, this is the Australian Plate, and this is the Pacific Plate. Most of Indonesia's volcanoes are located along the Sunda and Java trenches south of Java and Sumatra. These volcanoes are mostly stratovolcanoes, or composite volcanoes, which tend to form near where oceanic crust goes under continental crust, like the Sunda and Java trenches. Which would explain why this is where most of the volcanoes are. Why does Brunei exist? Yeah, it's a mystery, I honestly couldn't tell you. I'm kidding, I'm not going to be lazy like my 2018 self talking about Belgium. In short, Brunei was an empire of its own, as any EU4 players might know, with the Sultanate first established in 1368. Brunei was a strong regional power, even defeating the Spanish in 1578, with Ottoman support. However, by the 19th century, its power had started to weaken, at first gradually until the British nation attacked. The land of Sarawak was acquired from Brunei by Englishman James Brooke, establishing the Raj of Sarawak, with Brooke himself as the first of the so-called White Rajas. In order to not have to cede any more land, however, Brunei effectively became a British protectorate in 1888. However, this still didn't stop Sarawak from taking the Panduruan district, now Malaysia's Limbang division, two years later, explaining why it's also split into two similarly sized pieces. Why does East Timor exist? East Timor, Timor-Leste, timor lor Osae, whatever you want to call it, was colonized by the Portuguese from 1702 to after the Carnation Rebellion in 1975 when it declared independence. The following year, however, Indonesia invaded, though this invasion was not recognized as legal by the United Nations, eventually leading to East Timor's full independence in 2002. <laughs> Start a new drinking game, take a shot whenever the answer to one of these questions is colonialism. No, no, don't actually do that, you would die. Why does the Philippines use pesos? The exact same reason Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and Argentina call their currencies pesos. Actually, I think literally everyone here was expecting Spanish. And finally, why is Southeast Asia so populated? Southeast Asia is home to around 650 million people, which is actually less than that of Europe and not even half as large as nearby India or China. Nevertheless, the countries of Southeast Asia, like all newly developed countries, have experienced a sharp rise in population as they industrialize, with the entire region having only 165 million people in 1950. According to PopulationPyramid.net, Indonesia grew from 69 nice, million in 1950 to 270 million nowadays. Vietnam, meanwhile, grew from 24 to 96 million in that time, Thailand from 20 to 60 nice, and Laos from 1.6 to 7 million. Okay, well, you get the idea. Basically, without trying to summarize the entire field of demography in 10 seconds, this is a pattern essentially all industrialized countries have gone through in their history. China and India have gone through it, the US has gone through it, all the countries of Europe have gone through it, and now Southeast Asia's gone through it. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon for paying me to make follow-ups to three-year-old videos for easy views. If you'd like to get early access to new videos, watch deleted scenes, or just support the channel, join these awesome people up here, plus several more, at patreon.com slash